Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Bill Keeler, and I'm the host of our Friday edition of Military Trailblazer Office Hours. Um, I'd like to welcome everyone who's joined us today, especially those of you who are joining for the first time. Um, the primary mission of Military Trailblazer Office Hours is to provide a live forum for transitioning military, veterans, their spouses, and allies to ask questions and get help while they're on their Salesforce learning journey. Now, besides answering questions and providing help where we can, we also invite industry leaders, Salesforce MVPs, ISV partners, and others to speak and provide insights into various parts of the Salesforce platform and ecosystem. Now, today's topic is one that I'm truly excited about. Uh, our speaker, Sharice Van Lu, is going to be speaking about the power of us and how you can help support the nonprofit community today. And I'm really excited about this uh, because I feel like the spirit of volunteering and the support of something greater than oneself, it's an inherent quality in both service members as well as their families. And I'm really looking forward to learning how we can leverage that spirit in the support of Salesforce nonprofits. So without further delay, I'd like to introduce and invite Charisse to come off mute, introduce herself, and tell us a little bit about her Salesforce journey, and then we can jump into our topic. All right, let's try to share my screen here. Um, so I'm really appreciative of um, y'all having me here. Um, I have um, been really excited about this session. I'm just thankful, so thankful for um, the veterans, and especially in the Salesforce ecosystem. Y'all just continually crush like being active in the community. And uh, um, a little bit about me. I have um, about 20 years of nonprofit experience. I founded and led a small youth development nonprofit program in Washington, DC for about nine years. Then I went um, into independent consulting uh, where I did uh, Salesforce implementations and WordPress web development for about five years. Uh, then I had a stint at a uh, Salesforce.org consulting partner and realized I wanted to go back into um, working at a nonprofit. So for the past about seven years, I've been at the Pew Charitable Trust, which is a large nonprofit um, with, a, with a large CRM team. Um, I'm not on the CRM team. I do uh, project management, Tableau, um, and, and Salesforce adoption uh, projects. So I've been uh, using Salesforce in many different roles with many different hats for a little over 10 years. Uh, I started using Salesforce in the tiny nonprofit that I ran. And uh, mostly because I couldn't remember donors' names, uh, we were fueled by grassroots fundraising. So we had thousands of donors making very small donations in the community. And I wanted to appreciate and recognize every single one of them and Salesforce helped us do that. Um, Salesforce also helped us um, track the 40 uh, young people in our program. And I'm sharing this context because um, some of you may have varying levels of familiarity with how nonprofits use Salesforce. So um, because it's such a customizable platform, one of the ways even way back in 2007 that we were using Salesforce was um, to really have um, profiles of all of our students. Um, so kind of like, you know, many of you are probably parents, you might have folders um, on your computer for your kids, you know, your report, the report cards. Um, achievements, um, you know, any, anything that they need to be successful um, in school and in life, we would track all of that in Salesforce um, and can, in partnership with their parent or parents. So that's where and how I started using Salesforce uh, and why my passion for uh, Salesforce and nonprofits has continued for these years. Uh, I'm also a co-leader of the DC nonprofit user group, and um, that's where, you know, just like this group, um, there are trailblazer groups all over the world uh, that meet monthly, 
And uh, joining one of those nonprofit groups is a great way to, especially if you're interested in connecting with a nonprofit volunteer opportunity locally, which I especially recommend if you're experienced with Salesforce. Um, these user groups are a fantastic way to meet nonprofits that are, are looking to go ab above and beyond with Salesforce and they're invested in it um, typically if they're showing up at a user group. So that's a great way to, to connect with opportunities. And I'm a passionate open source volunteer, which we'll get into later. Um, the current teams that I'm on are DEI, mentoring, and videography. Um, and we'll, we'll kind of go through that. And uh, last but not least, I'm really passionate about building communities. So, you know, I really admire what Bill's doing here with y'all and, you know, um, networking, uh, sharing knowledge, sharing opportunities. This is really what gets me excited about giving back and being active in the community. And, and I know this is going to be recorded, but especially with links um, and other resources, it can be challenged to get those from a recording. So I will um, commit to and a LinkedIn post um, probably tomorrow. It may not be today. <laughs> so uh, you can look for those. Uh, I'm Sharice VL on uh, pretty much all social platforms. Uh, so that's where you can find me. And it's Friday. I don't know about y'all, but I've had a long week, a good week, but a long week. And you may or may not, you know, remember everything we talk about. And so I wanted to just share that the main takeaway is to put time on someone's calendar for conversation, um, especially if you're either looking to transition to a Salesforce career or um, the really, you know, those of you who are already experienced and already busy, but still willing to give back, which Oh, you have my heart. <laughs> Put time on my calendar or anyone's calendar who you already have a relationship with. And um, I, I can only speak for myself, but I would be happy to kind of kind of talk through you about what really uh, you what you get excited about, um, what you what expertise you have, what um, things you're looking to challenge yourself with, either in a technical way or just in having as much impact as you can with your volunteer time, that's uh, definitely don't hesitate to hit me up for a conversation like that. So there are fortunately an incredible number of ways um, that you can volunteer um, your time uh, regardless of your skill, uh, the role you either have in the Salesforce ecosystem or the role you're looking to have. And um, one of the um, links that I'm gonna share out in uh, my follow-up LinkedIn post and in um, on the Twitter thread is uh, Gordon Lee's um, really excellent two-part series of articles, which I'm gonna encourage everyone to read if you haven't. It talks about, um, it's focused on people who don't have as much Salesforce experience, which may not apply to many of you, but um, because some of you or a number of you may have mentees or people that you're um, coaching into a Salesforce career transition, please, please read those articles. Um, it talks about being responsible when you're volunteering with nonprofits. And, uh, you know, always having an experienced sponsor and mentor so that you don't do more harm or create more work for the nonprofit. So um, I'm going to start off with my um, kind of the, 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 the volunteer opportunity of the moment, especially because they have a, a session tonight, an information session. Uh, so I really wanted to highlight HBCU Force. And HBCU Force, I just started volunteering with this year, and it's my favorite new volunteer opportunity. Uh, it's um, an amazing nonprofit uh, focused on transitioning uh, folks in underrepresented communities into tech. 
um, with a focus on the Salesforce ecosystem. And uh, the info session is tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern. Um, so I'm going to uh, bring that up actually. Let me go back to my LinkedIn and you can see um, you can sign up for the, the info session. So if you go to my LinkedIn, there's a link or even better, follow HBCU Force on LinkedIn. And um, you can see um, their volunteer opportunities as well. Um, so the main uh, opportunity they have at the moment is they need instructors for their eight week uh, challenge, which is a, um, an opportunity to um, coach students, um, and instruct, instruct students. So if you're passionate about teaching um, and really love to teach uh, and you don't get to do that in your day job, um, something you're passionate about, this would be a perfect fit for you. So um, if teaching uh, basically towards the um, goal of getting students or uh, career transitioners prepared to take the admin certification, I thought float your boat. HBC Force is definitely something you should sign up for. And again, the information session is tonight at 6 p.m. Uh, if you plug in HBCU Force in LinkedIn or on Twitter, um, the, the link to sign up for that will be right there. So for teachers, um, instructors, experienced folks, HBCU Force is um, my current recommendation. For pretty much anybody, including if you're brand new to the Salesforce ecosystem, if, you're, if you don't have experience yet, if you're not sure how you can volunteer, you want to give back and learn, um, Open Source Commons is the way to go. Um, it's a community project in partnership with Salesforce.org. Um, Salesforce.org uh, has a Power of Us program, which... Uh, donates 10 Salesforce licenses to uh, 501c3 nonprofits. And uh, so that's why a lot of nonprofits uh, use Salesforce. There's that donation program and then additional licenses are discounted. Uh, so that's really, I would say, a key reason why nonprofits have really um, adopted Salesforce over the years. and um, Open Source Commons provides applications um, that are created by the community, but also supported by Salesforce engineers uh, to, for, for packages that sit on top of Salesforce and help nonprofits do with Salesforce um, what they need to do, anything from fundraising to um, uh, program management uh, to uh, awarding grants. So that's one that I have, I'll go into in depth. And then another one that is uh, something that uh, happens if you're kind of more of a documentation nerd, um, whether you're really experienced or brand new, um, the, there's equal opportunity and equal value in contributing to the salesforce.org documentation for all of the products, including the ones created through open source commons. So there's a focus group we meet monthly and um, we uh, give feedback to salesforce.org um, and help make the documentation better so that nonprofits can um, really understand how to use the platform in a clear as way as possible. Um, any questions before I go into the open source commons program? Because this is kind of the, the largest place and um, I'm not, I always meet people who don't know about it. Um, and I, I'm going to check the chat, actually. Yeah, sure. Um, there was one question that came through, if, uh, if I could throw it your way. And I think sure. you may have answered this as well already, but um, what brought you and your organization to use Salesforce versus some other application? And I think you might have spoken to that a little bit about you know the free licenses, discounts, but was there anything else uh, that you can elaborate on? It was... So the free licenses were, were the, um, the initial draw. When I started doing more research, the fact that um, there's such a robust community around it, uh, which I mean, it's grown exponentially since 2007, 
But even in 2007, there was a Google group where volunteers who were not Salesforce employees would just answer questions. You would ask a question and it would get answered very quickly. And that culture continues to this day. And um, it's, it's amazing. Uh, so the, on the Trailblazer community, there are groups where nonprofits can go ask questions. And so that's another way to volunteer uh, is just helping uh, answer questions about any of the products, uh, especially if you're already knowledgeable. Um, if you're looking to gain knowledge, that's a great place to hang out and learn. Um, if you are seeking a role, a Salesforce role with a nonprofit. So it's, it's the community that, that sold me. Uh, uh, there's no other product out there that has a community like Salesforce, uh, especially for nonprofits. Um, if, if there is, I'd love to hear about it, but I, I'm, I'm not aware of one. <laughs> Great question. So the open source uh, commons program is, it's, it's a robust community in itself. And anyone is welcome to volunteer. Any level, um, we have experts, we have some of the top experts in the Salesforce ecosystem um, and we have beginners and everyone comes together and works together to basically build these apps and build products for nonprofits and uh, iterate and improve them, incorporate nonprofit feedback. Um, if you're a nonprofit and you are using a product that's free, um, it, it's open source, um, you can come to these and say, hey, I, this product isn't meeting a need. Is there a way to incorporate my nonprofit's need into the roadmap? And um, it's, a, it's a really great experience, um, uh, really unique. And, um, oh, oops, sorry. <laughs> and uh, um, kind of uh, something that you can do uh, as a long-term volunteer um, option, or it's something you can do once. Um, we have sprint events where you can come in and kind of do a one and done thing, or you can get involved in a team and be involved in an ongoing way. So uh, some of the, the kind of components of the program, we have these like collaboration spaces. So the sprint events that I was referring to, um, each project team, there are over 14 active project teams. It's amazing. Um, there's a Slack for each one. Um, there are training classes. Uh, if you're new, uh, you can request a mentor and the mentor will help you um, understand how to figure out what you might wanna get involved in. Um, and there are really passionate people um, like myself who you can reach out to and say, you know, walk me through what the options are. Um, I really, I'm, I'm experienced in, um, I'm, I'm, you know, passionate about development, uh, want to kind of volunteer my developer skills, uh, and we can get you matched up with a team that's current doing active development on one of their apps. Um, and then it's all about sustainability too, right? So, um, anything that's volunteer based, even though this is a really special open source project because it's hybrid, it's um, really supported and bolstered a lot by salesforce.org, um, which of course is part of Salesforce. Um, there's, we, we have a lot of things in place to make sure that all of the contributions um, are sustainable so that if something happens, your family situation changes, life changes, your job changes, that everyone's contributing in a way where um, things keep moving forward. Um, everything's on GitHub as a source of truth um, and Cumulus CI is used and um, apps of course go through security review. Uh, and this, these are just, I wanted to include a few quotes because it's really amazing to see the impact and honestly, the community in the open source community uh, for nonprofits um, that's within the, the larger Trailblazer ecosystem. 
uh, I've really gained a lot of um, special friendships. And in addition to um, knowing that the hours that I put in are benefiting, uh, I think thousands of nonprofits. I need to get an actual number, but I know uh, Salesforce has um, a large, like tens of thousands of active nonprofit customers. I'm not sure exactly how many of them are using um, NPSP, which is the nonprofit success pack and other um, open source um, applications. I think it's most of them, um, but at a minimum, you can know that you're by being involved in this, that you're impacting thousands of nonprofits. Um, so you can go and do a, an implementation for a single nonprofit. That's always an option, but it's also something where you have to be, you know, if you go that route, you're the project manager, you're the BA, you're, you know, you're filling all the roles unless you assemble a team. Um, and in the open source commons projects, you have a team that's already assembled, which is fantastic in my opinion. Uh, you can really focus on contributing your gifts and what you're excited about doing. And um, the sprints used to be in person and they've gone virtual. So I wanted to include this slide because um, it's a few screenshots of, of sprints that have happened. Um, they're typically anywhere from 100 to 150 people. Um, we could always use more volunteers. Um, that's kind of you know, the bare minimum for all the projects we have running. Um, there's, there's always a need, we can always use more help. And I was mentioning that there are different roles with open source commons, and these are some of them. And I wanted to bring this um, information up because you can see that even as a beginner, there are a number of roles that you can do and you don't have to contribute um, a product, like work product. Every, like people are welcome to come and hang out. That's every, we all started somewhere. Uh, my first couple of sprints, I was very nervous. Um, I had imposter syndrome, even though I was an experienced Salesforce professional. And um, you're completely welcome to just sit and observe and learn. Um, that's, you know, that's how people learn and, and get involved. So anyone is welcome. And um, these are some of the, the different roles. Um, I would say that documentation and marketing um, are typically more of the, um, areas where beginners might feel um, more comfortable contributing. Um, but most of them are, uh, you know, if you get involved on a monthly basis, there's uh, these monthly um, hour, you know, any con contributing one to four hours a month is pretty standard. But you can also, as I mentioned, just contribute to one uh, sprint. We call our events where we kind of, it's like, it's similar to a hackathon setting. Um, we call those the, the sprint events. And those happen typically every other month. Um, so those, those are kind of the main uh, things that I wanted to highlight. Um, there's just a whole lot of, of opportunities. Um, but I wanted to kind of pause here and see if, if folks have questions. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so I can, I can see your faces. All right, so just uh, one thing I wanted to point out from that last slide, uh, you're talking about open source commons. Uh, I believe that the DLRS uh, tool that a lot of companies use for rolling up, uh, you know, fields, you know, through lookup relationships, uh, that's now part of open source commons. Um, and I've recently, I've, I've started volunteering for that, but where, what I find it really amazing is that not only can you volunteer and try to give back, but when you're a developer and you're looking at a GitHub repo that you might not fully understand or you have questions about, um, you can look through that code and you have the developers that are actually writing that stuff that you might not understand right in that same Slack channel with you. So you can just, you can interact with these folks, you know, and ask questions and, you know, again, and learn and get up to speed. And then, you know, the, the goal is that, you know, a little ways down the path, you're the one that's helping the new guy answering questions and getting them up to speed. So it, it's been a really great experience thus far. I really want to get more time to volunteer to it, but uh, just from the little I've done, it's it's been great. So, 
Yeah, I, I should pr probably, um, let me check out the, the comments before in the chat before I sh pull up the GitHub pages because I um, just want to show that you can obviously GitHub, everything's transparent and published. And now there was there was one question I saw here, um, and I don't know if you have experience in this, uh, Sharice, but uh, somebody had asked about uh, they're looking to take the nonprofit consultant exam in the near future. Uh, any tips on good resources or study material uh, that, uh, that you might be able to share with the group? Yes, um, I can definitely share uh, the, you know, the trailheads are a good starting point. I'm assuming you've probably already, already checked those out. Anything related to nonprofit cloud on trailhead. There are also sessions a couple of times a year. Um, I'm not sure if you're at a partner. Um, if you're not at a partner, um, it, they're, free certification prep sessions for the nonprofit uh, cloud consultant exam. And you basically just have to ask a partner you know to get an invite because <laughs> they are open even though they're not really advertised. Um, and that's one of the best ways like if you're looking for structured preparation. Um, aside from that and Trailhead, uh, I would say keeping an eye like um, on the user groups for any there are often sessions um, again probably a couple times a year um, where some of the user groups will offer um, a, a session on preparing for that um, another resource is uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the LinkedIn group I think it's called nonprofit Saturdays what is it called Salesforce Saturday Nonprofit Cloud Group. Um, let me pull it up here and share my screen again. Um, so this is open to anyone. And um, Sarah leads it. Um, she has training, trainings, presentations every Saturday. All of the user groups are great, but this is, um, you know, something where she has everything recorded. She puts it on YouTube or somewhere that's where it's recorded. Uh, and this is a great way to, to network with other folks and get those um, kind of nonprofit cloud skills. And um, for the open source commons repositories on GitHub, these are, um, you know, you can see that if you go to SFDO community sprints, um, I'll put this in the chat, that um, there's just a lot going on. It's really fun. There's, um, so Snowfakery is a data generation. Um, you can generate data for your nonprofit Salesforce instance, uh, fake data for testing. Um, there's, a, you know, outbound funds, which is grant making. Uh, if you're interested in supporting organizations that give out grants to communities. Uh, one of the ones I'm involved in is the DEI framework. Uh, this is not an app, so there isn't development involved, but we're trying to create um, open source products that can um, help create more inclusive event and diverse events, including the sprints. So you can check all these out. Um, a lot of times the most active contributors will be someone you can reach out to, um, or you can go in the Trailblazer community, which um, the, there's an open source common. So if you go to um, Trailblazer community, uh, type in open source commons, you'll get to this page um, and you can ask any question you want. Say, I want to learn more about this um, product project I saw on GitHub, or these are my skills, how can I get involved? Just post that and someone will, will get back to you. We have any more questions in the, in the chat so far? I don't believe we have any other questions in the chat unless I might've missed one. Um, just kind of open it up to the group real quick. Any, any questions on uh, what we covered here?
All right, Therese, before uh, we open it up to just general questions, uh, was there anything else yeah. that you were looking to, uh, to present from your presentation? Well, I think that, you know, oftentimes uh, folks also want to volunteer directly with a nonprofit. And I would say that, you know, if you haven't done that before, definitely reach out to someone who can help guide you, even if you're an experienced Salesforce professional. And the size of the nonprofit matters. Uh, sometimes there's different levels of awareness um, and, and knowledge, whether technical or data um, at a nonprofit and uh, the scope can increase exponentially. <laughs> so um, it's really, it's always great to help nonprofits directly, um, but I would encourage anyone to connect with someone who has done pro bono uh, work with a nonprofit to kind of uh, learn best practices. Uh, definitely check out Gordon Lee's articles um, if you're a beginner. And then if you're experienced, I would recommend just kind of having a one-on-one -on -one session with um, anyone who, who's done a lot of pro bono work, myself or, or anyone in the community. I can po point you to others um, if you're looking to get connected with someone in, either in your region geographically um, or with a specific type of nonprofit that you're looking to support or a specific cause. Awesome. Uh, one question that came through, um, as far as a first role within the Salesforce ecosystem, um, if somebody had an opportunity to work for a nonprofit or work for you know, a for-profit company, um, what would you think are the benefits of maybe taking that first step and and working as part of a nonprofit? Definitely. So I, I do a lot of mentoring, especially for uh, folks transitioning careers into Salesforce. And one of the the best ways, if you are someone who has nonprofit experience or you have experience that would be attractive to a certain type of nonprofit, um, a lot of times you can get a role. Uh, I recommend searching for uh, positions that don't have Salesforce in the title, but have Salesforce as a platform that the nonprofit uses. Because once you get a job in the organization, they find out that you're interested in learning more about Salesforce and doing more about Salesforce, you'll be like gold to them. <laughs> so you may not apply for a Salesforce administrator position, <laughs> But if you're at all interested in Salesforce um, and if they use it, um, especially if they're not like one of the largest nonprofits, like this may not work at, you know, the American Cancer Society, for you know, example, or the Pew Charitable Trust where I work. But it um, it works a lot of places like you get in the door and, um, you know, either in the development department. I mean, I know people who have get, gotten jobs as administrative assistants. Uh, six months later, they're the Salesforce administrator. Their title has been changed. Their salary has been increased by 30% or more. <laughs> so if you already have a nonprofit experience and that's your subject matter expertise, definitely that's a way in. Um, and you can kind of study um, while you work and get your certification and things like that. Um, and then um, do you think there that covers that what the question was, or do you think there's also um, questions around if you're more if you're already experienced with Salesforce? No, I think that I think that covered the question. Um, so I hope that covered the question. Um, does anybody have any other questions or want to add on to uh, to that question that was asked? I could add that on. Um, yeah, I second your comment. Um, so. I've worked before with um, before I had joined Salesforce with other start com companies, um, and also have worked with um, nonprofits. Definitely, if you're interested, just um, be active and uh, be um, direct on what you're interested in, especially going to Salesforce because there's a need of that. Um, most people who are just starting off as a BA, but just um, transitioning out from active to being, um, you know, a vet. It's just like not knowing, but actually just talking to people and guiding that to the military, um, you know, um, because there's trailblazer community because I've always have um, transitioned my husband's 
um, colleagues and my my dad who is now retired, but you know, some of his friends want to get into Salesforce. Um, kind of like just be their mentor, able to listen, but once you're in, just let them know that you're interested in it and they'll get you set up. And then just be proactive in your user group and your community, um, Trailheads community, just start um, typing in your form in and just put it out there, what you're interested, what you're planning to do. People are, are gonna help. I mean, I've sent, um, I've worked with my ex-boss um, before and he started a company, but I've sent other vets to him and he's now, connected with you, Bill, um, you know, Mark Galante. And so just, yeah, just be active voicing your, um, your concern and your interests is definitely a second that comment. I love that. Uh, that's great. And that, that reminds me of kind of the next step. If you do get a job at a nonprofit and you're kind of wanting to do more with Salesforce at that organization, uh, ask for a mentor, right? Ask me, ask anybody who will listen. Uh, if somebody doesn't respond, ask someone else. Because again, it's all about helping a nonprofit. Um, you know, you need a job, you need experience, but if you're going to work at a nonprofit or volunteer with a nonprofit, um, my opinion, and I hope you share it, is that the nonprofit's mission um, and the public services that they provide to a community are, are really special um, and need to be protected and valued and uplifted. So there are so many people who have experience who will help you and make sure that the Salesforce work um, and effort that you contribute within a nonprofit is quality and that it will move their mission forward. Um, it'll move your career forward and you'll learn faster and better um, and just gain best practices um, and have really good guidance uh, with a mentor. So highly recommend that. Awesome. Uh, I did see another question that came in here. Um, is there a resource for searching what nonprofits use SFDO? Um, I personally don't know what SFDO is. So I think that might have come from the fact that um, the maybe the GitHub repository is called SFDO Community Sprints. And uh, SFDO stands for Salesforce.org. Um, it's not it's not commonly used, but they, they use it for GitHub. <laughs> so uh, the answer is not really. Um, you, can get a, you can get a good sense at a regional or local level from user group participation. Uh, you can also get a good sense from job postings, um, volunteer postings, uh, like I know on Catch a Fire, volunteers that use Salesforce will often have uh, requests for volunteers, um, things like that. So there, there's not one master list uh, that I'm aware of. Great. All right. So I think uh, from the chat, I think that pretty much answers all the questions. Uh, any other questions from the group? Uh, we'll open it up here um, for questions on what we covered today questions on how to get involved or just questions related to anything Salesforce. We'll open it up to everything right now. If you don't mind, I'll pick up real quick. As somebody... uh, I heard somebody come off mute. Oh, it's Dominic. Can I say something? Oh, there you Dominic. There you are. I can see you now. Yeah, hey, good. Uh, like I know there's a lot of advice and I, and I came on late and I might've missed something. I apologize if I'm saying something uh, out of time. But I just want to reiterate the fact that if you're brand new with Salesforce, you want to get experience. There's a lot of people that say it's good to work with a nonprofit. I just want to warn you, if they're using the NPSP, the nonprofit success pack, like the, it changes everything from what you've learned. So make sure that you, I mean, it's every, all the words are different. All the, con, like it's, you really got to immerse, like if you don't have a lot of nonprofit experience, um, before you get your, start to get your Salesforce experience, it's got, it's, um, it's it's adding a confusing world on a very limited knowledge base. So be careful, like the kinds of nonprofits, but work with a mentor, work with somebody who knows the NPSP, do the NPSP trails if they're using it. If they're not, 
to just kind of straight Salesforce and need help, remember to crawl, walk, then run uh, with them because they're going to ask you to do things and remember anybody just getting started because this is something my students will come to me and say all the time. Like, they go, oh, uh, they're asking about reports. I don't really know that much about reports. I'm like, guess what? You already know more than they do because they ask you. Now, don't take advantage of that. Remember that you don't know that much and, you know, work with a mentor or helper. But it's, you know, uh, I remember even when I first started teaching the admin class, I wasn't doing admin work. And I messed up stuff for myself and my client and my buddy, you know, but that's how you learn, right? So it's, I did it to them for free. It's not like I felt bad about it, but it is, you know, um, it, it takes a while. You need the experience. You need to make the mistakes. So make sure that you do it with a little bit of caution. And I'm telling you that because I didn't, right? So that's how I give most of my advice for my own bad mistakes. And, and hopefully that uh, that'll help you guys out. But just, you know, uh, nonprofits will be willing to let you help. But remember, you're kind of a novice. So get more help. <laughs> Is that, what do you think by that, Cherise? Is that I love that advice, especially because if you don't, if you're not already a nonprofit expert, and when I say that, you know how nonprofits run, what their terminology is, um, learning the nonprofit version of Salesforce yeah. at the beginning of your Salesforce journey, if nonprofits mm -hmm. aren't your thing already, yes, that's just going to confuse you. You can volunteer in the nonprofit spaces and learn how to be a good business analyst. You can learn how to create good documentation and you don't have to learn the nonprofit products. And if you're just clear about when you go into those spaces that that's what you're looking to do, you'll still be welcomed with open arms. Um, and another thing that I do wanna mention is all the community events that you can volunteer at. I can't tell you, so there are these community conferences called the Dreamin' Events. Um, there's nonprofit dreaming. There's a dreaming for pretty much m m many places around the world now, especially in the U.S. Um, there were probably about eight job seekers in the nonprofit dreaming organizing like group of volunteers, um, and I was able to be job references for all of them because we were on weekly meetings. They showed up. They did what they said they were going to do. It was not related to um, anything Salesforce aside from we were organizing an event and I knew that they were like so you know you there are all sorts of ways to just get connections and get those references even without knowing Salesforce yet um, so if you ever have questions about what those could look like um, or want to get connected to folks Bill's super connected like many people oh my gosh like there's so many people in this room that you know, can connect you. <laughs> so reach out. Um, yeah, I think that's great advice. Thanks so much, Dominic. Thank you, Sheree. I would actually, I would say you could probably um, search the, if you really want to help, but be careful how you do it, because I've got my hands slapped a couple times, but like the Essentials community, the Salesforce Essentials is the KISS version of Salesforce, keeping it standard Salesforce, which is you're not going to get too much the craziness with Essentials customers is that they really don't understand data and what they're trying to do with the data. They're coming to, and when you're dealing with smaller organizations, so you're dealing with leaders. Um, and depending on, like those customers ask questions and you could reach out to them and find a way to help them as well. Cause it, they'll be the simplest solutions. Although you may find the worst mistakes that you can help them through. Uh, as you learn Salesforce too, that's what I'm seeing too. So like go to the business communities because they should be pretty easy to help to get that experience. Awesome. Thanks, Dominic. Uh, I did see a hand up. Uh, Samantha, did you have a question or something you want to say? Hi, can you hear me? We can, yep. Great, perfect. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Samantha. I am pretty new to Salesforce. I guess this is kind of a question, you know, as a newbie here, I kind of jumped on a chance to volunteer uh, for a nonprofit. And, uh, and it's with a team of other volunteers, some have great experience. And then there's me who doesn't have a lot of experience at all. 
And sometimes they, we're trying to solve problems that are way over my head. So would you recommend that I, you know, join like a user, like, like a nonprofit user group, or should I just type my question into a forum and see what comes back? What's best practice for someone like me? So oh, I would definitely utilize the Trailblazer community groups for nonprofits. Um, and that way you have a globe, like all the experts on a global level. The user groups are great, but they're they're smaller. Uh, so definitely utilize the Trailblazer community. Um, there are lots of salesforce.org partners that specifically focus on nonprofits and are experts and give free advice that's expert level. Um, so definitely ask any and all questions in the Trailblazer community um, for sure. And, and to get visibility and directed, um, get your question answered quickly, feel free to tag people. So tag me, uh, tag any, any nonprofit Salesforce experts, you know, um, and then I'll likely tag other people because, you know, it's, it's a, there's a lot to know and none of us know it all. So we've got to just keep helping each other. Yeah. Just to, just to add to that. Right. So I think, um, a lot of the issues that I've had over the years where I've been really struggling to find help, um, the trailblazer community, uh, that's great. But where I really find the help is in, in the user groups or just in the networking piece of it. Right. So if you know somebody that, you know, um, has been working in the ecosystem, they've been working in that field, they've been working in the nonprofit space, whatever it is, um, maybe reach out to them directly. The, and like Sheree said, they, even if they can't help you directly, they might know somebody who can, or they might be able to point you in the right direction. So, you know, everybody throws out that buzzword, that networking buzzword, but, you know, it really does help, especially within the Salesforce community. I feel like it's just one of the most connected, um, you know, application ecosystems uh, that you can find. Um, so I think that's great advice to reach out to folks and see if they can help you. Great. Thank you so much. Great. Uh, any other questions? Anything else that uh, you all want to discuss before we wrap up here for uh, for the holidays? Are you going to have uh, Bill? Are you going to have the sessions the next two weeks, or no? You're going to hold off until after the first. Yeah, great question. So I'll uh, while you're all formulating any additional questions, I'll give you kind of an idea of uh, the roadmap for what we have going on for the rest of the year and for early next year. So. This will be our last session for the year. So we're going to take off on uh, you know, next Friday so that my wife doesn't kill me. Uh, same thing for New Year's, uh, the week after. Um, and then that first week coming back, uh, we already have a few speakers lined up. Um, we have Cheryl Feldman, uh, who is a PM that works for Salesforce, that's going to be speaking about um, the Auth Z X and uh, admin kind of roadmap. Uh, she's a great speaker, great resource uh, to come speak to us. Um, we have a few other folks. I should have had the, the list here as I was going to mention these. Let me just pull it up real quick. Um, we have uh, uh, somebody coming in and speaking to us about requirements gathering, continuous integration, continuous development, that type of work. And it's still in the planning phases, but we're looking to try to carve out at least a half an hour per meeting for maybe eight or nine meetings and do something like a, an apex uh, boot camp, getting started, work together type um you know, session. So eight, eight weeks straight of some goal in mind, something that we're trying to build to and kind of cover it, you know, throughout those eight weeks. So that's what we have coming up in uh, in the new year, but uh, at least for, for 2021, this is going to be a wrap as soon as we hang up here. All right. So let me, uh, let me just ask any other questions or comments before uh, we wrap things up. I wanted to mention one more thing. Uh, was it Lena who, who, who asked about, no, Samantha, I'm sorry. Samantha, the, the project you're currently on, it is also possible to get Salesforce employees to volunteer. It has to be a discrete project, uh, but ping me on LinkedIn or Twitter, anywhere. Um, and getting uh, someone from Salesforce to help can also be pretty valuable. Great, thank you so much. Yeah, Samantha, I was going to chime in on that. Um, so I work here in Salesforce and we do have a month of pro bonos and stuff um, to help out with nonprofits, but all, all organizations. So if you reach out, um, 
pygmy or do it on the community and stuff like that, keep connecting and stuff. Someone will get to you because I've gotten people connect with me that I was just like, oh, so and so, think you would have the right answer. Um, I work in the public sector, so it's like, okay, so yeah, I'll get you to the right person. But yeah, just just ping, ping me or ping, yeah, just keep in touch. And um, if you need anything, just let us know. I'll try to get thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that because, um, you know, I mean, take you up on it. Sometimes I feel so lost and without an answer, but I don't really know where to go for nonprofits because I've mm -hmm. never worked in it. But I will connect with you ladies. And, you know, if I need some help, I might um, take you up on that. Great. Awesome. Thank now, you. I did, did see another hand raised in the last few minutes we have here. Um, yeah, hi, uh, I have a quick question. Where can I find uh, the recordings for these sessions? That's a great question. It's almost like I paid you to ask that question. So <laughs> at the conclusion of our call, uh, once we get the recording, uh, I will make sure that I post this not only within the, the Salesforce uh, veteran community, but also in our LinkedIn group uh, that we have um, on LinkedIn. So if you're not part of that military trailblazer office hours LinkedIn group, um, I would suggest that's where uh, you should join that group. You'll get recordings from these sessions. You'll get recordings from uh, David DeMaz Wednesday sessions. And then, you know, of course, if you saw somebody on the call that uh, you wanted to connect with afterwards, that would be a great place to try to find them as well. Um, so yeah, recording will be posted to that group within LinkedIn. That's the our main kind of uh, collaboration site right now until uh, Salesforce fully integrates LinkedIn, Chatter, Slack, and all the other methods that we have. We're going to stick with LinkedIn. Thank you. Yeah. So all right. Can you post that group because there's a lot of group. Uh, yeah. Like yeah. Let me uh, let me do that again. You, you think I would have uh, thought to do that, but yes, let me grab that link real <laughs> Thank quick you. and so I will put it into the chat, not a direct message, but to everyone. Perfect. And there you go. Yeah. So I just Thank put that, that group there in the, in the, in the chat. Um, but with that, just looking at the time, um, I know Several folks have hard stops at one o'clock here, so I want to try to be respectful of everybody's time. Uh, Sharice, I want to thank you very much uh, for volunteering to speak to us today. Um, I, I learned a lot during this call today, and I'm sure a lot of other folks did. So thank you very much uh, for coming. Um, it's been a pleasure. And for everyone uh, that's on the call, hope you have a great holiday, and I'm looking forward to uh, syncing up next year. Thank you all so much. Yes, happy holiday, everyone. Bye-bye. Happy holidays.